Thank you for joining me, viewers. Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. We're in the Watchtower Study Edition for November 2019, um, paragraphs 1 and 2, according to 1 Peter 4, 7 through 8, what will help us cope with adversities. Um, there's signs, because they say we need good friends during the Great Tribulation, there's signs that are going to take place before the tribulation begins. One of those signs is there'll be a world leader that brings peace to the world like no other. Um, but he'll be assassinated. He'll be mortally wounded um, in front of the world. So it'll probably happen on TV. There's all sorts of signs. Um, so the tribulation isn't going to hit you if you're a Bible observer and world observer of world events. It's not going to hit you with too much surprise, but at this stage there's no sign of that taking place as yet. So the guessing game can be taking out, taken right out of when the tribulation is going to happen. But back to this article, which has been quite a circus really, considering that Jehovah Witnesses say true friends show love at all times and we got lost in a few presentations there about shunning. Um, Paragraphs 1 and 2, according to 1 Peter 4, 7 through 8, what will happen, what will help us to cope with adversities? Well, one of the things that will help Jehovah Witnesses cope with adversities is to accept people outside their organisation. I know they have trouble accepting those in the organisation that don't want to bend the knee to the organisation's needs and wants, but... Um, they need to stop undermining governments. They need to stop undermining worldly people. As I said before in one of my last talks, the Jehovah Witnesses that I was speaking to down in the park the other day, women of, of, of all things, I was shocked, said they can't wait for Armageddon because people that have used Jehovah's name in vain will be um, dealt with. I, I looked viewers, I have to be honest with you, I've never heard anything like that. All the Christians I know, they are hoping Armageddon and the Great Tribulation is postponed for as long as possible. But not the Jehovah Witnesses. They want vengeance on the people that aren't Jehovah Witnesses, um, basically. So let's just read this. Um, they've got a picture here, as we're using for the background of the series where people are huddled in an attic obviously hiding from this kind of thing that i'm showing you here this is real life this is real footage from the russian scandal put up by jw russia video it's part of their propaganda you can watch that while i read but this is the picture they're painting the Jeho <clears throat> the jehovah witnesses of trying to dodge this kind of thing now they're not going to dodge this kind of thing for several reasons the Russian government um, went over their articles linguistically and decided that theologically their theology is corrupted and extreme. And I agree with that because I was, I was really, really shocked. As a simple Australian um, conscientious observer of religion, I was extremely shocked the way in which those Jehovah Witness women were trying to bring on Armageddon for the destruction of people that won't become Jehovah Witnesses. I couldn't believe their attitude. As we move deeper into the last days, we may face severe adversities. For example, after one election campaign, a country in Western Africa was torn apart by social unrest and mob violence. We have social unrest and mob violence happening all over the world. It's irrespective of the position of the Jehovah Witnesses. For over six months, our brothers and sisters could not move about freely because they were in a combat zone. My advice to people that are in combat zones, be Jehovah Witnesses or not, is to flee. And the government governments will tell people to flee. If there's something going in, on in Western Africa, the Australian... Um, consulate will warn the Australians in that area to leave. Now, if the Jehovah Witnesses are ignorant enough not to leave, 
then they deserve everything they get. The Russian government has banned the Jehovah Witness organization as extreme. Now, this isn't the first time it's happened to this cult. Now, if they want to, um, in one of a, a leaked video, they're in their private leaders meeting, hier hierarchy, top brass meeting, they said that Russia is taking on a mountain if they think they're going to take on the J-dubs. Well, be very careful what you say, Watchtower Bible and Track Society, because Russia just does not muck around. Now, if you're in a combat zone, honestly, if there's bombs going off around you, what are you going to do? Stand there with a Jehovah Witness cart? Is that what you're going to do? Or, or several of you, if you don't want to do it on your own, are the brothers and sisters going to stand there with you? No, I honestly believe that Jehovah Witnesses, like anybody else, are going to run and get out of there. And if you don't, you get what you deserve. Um, what helped them to cope with such hardships? Now, this is more than hardship. This is, this is um, what would you say? This is crisis. This is a crisis point. This is a point where you have to get out. If you're not a military person in a combat zone, you need to leave or you're going to be maimed and killed. This isn't a time of hardship. This has got nothing to do with religious work. This has got to do with intergovernmental or, or sociological battles. You're not going to stand there with a cart and take them on, are you? So, so some found refuge in homes of brothers living in a safer area. Other brother reported, in such a situation, I appreciated having friends around me. We were able to encourage one another. Okay, this is what a war zone looks like, viewers. This is graphic footage. You can have a look at this. Well, where are you going to think that the Jehovah Witnesses are going to be standing in a war zone with, um, with all this sort of thing within a combat zone? That, oh, you know. This is real. People die in combat zones. They're not the sort of place that you just stay around. This is this this sort of language is so far from reality. It's not funny. In such a situation, I appreciated having friends around me. We were able to encourage one another to do what? To stay and stay with a cart? Look. No, you want to be encouraging one another to get out of there. Get, get, your, get your senses together and get out of there. When the Great Tribulation strikes, we will appreciate having good friends who love us. You'll appreciate more than that. You'll be trying to stay alive. So it is urgent that we build strong bonds of friendships now. Now, the problem with this is, and let's just face it, the Jehovah Witnesses don't want to build friendships with people outside their organization. They don't want to build friendships with people that are not Jehovah Witnesses. Some more Civil War footage. Do you think the Jehovah Witnesses are going to be hanging around there trying to make friends um, and all the rest of it while all this sort of stuff's going on where they're trying to be missionaries? No, 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 no. We can learn much from the experience of Jeremiah whose friends helped him survive during the time leading up to the destruction of Israel. How can we imitate Jeremiah? Jeremiah's got nothing to do with this sort of civil unrest, which is what they're talking about. They're talking about, and they mentioned themselves here in the article, a combat zone. Do you think the Jehovah Witnesses are going to be encouraging one another to stay out there in... Um, with the carts in this sort of thing, or hide in homes and stuff. You don't see Jehovah Witnesses helping these people that are fleeing war. You do see the Red Cross and the Salvation Army and all these types trying to get in and help, but you won't see the Jehovah Witnesses organisation get involved in this sort of charitable work. You just won't see it. It's not it's not what they do. So if Jehovah Witnesses wanna, you know, play the persecution game for an organization that's regarded as extreme and a cult, 
then go right ahead. You're not going to find any example from Jeremiah because you'll see Jeremiah got his mates to go and do his dirty work. He didn't risk it himself. So I'm going to hand this over. We'll look at some videos. Uh, this is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. I hope you enjoy the following presentations. Links will be left below. The governing body wants you to know that we love you dearly and pray for you constantly. The First Presidency prays for you often. The prophet loves you. The governing body loves you very much. The elders love you very much. Your Christian parents love you very much. And these ones will tell you the truth. Go to where you know the light of truth shines. A worthy friend a loving bishop or stake president, an understanding parent. Every one of us will have our loyalty to Jehovah put to the test. When that happens, will you take a firm stand on Jehovah's side? Loyalty to the Lord carries an obligation of loyalty to those called by the Lord to lead His church. We must always remember that violating Jehovah's principles is never a solution. Obedience to gospel principles brings forth joy and happiness. Disobedience has a day of reckoning that will only bring forth heartache. At times, we may be asked to take on a task in our service to Jehovah that we find rather difficult, unpleasant, or even distasteful. However, our loyalty to Jehovah will prompt us to be obedient despite the challenges because we realize that if we are, it will strengthen our relationship with Jehovah and make us happy in the end. Our unquestioning obedience to the Lord's commandments is not blind obedience. The prophet Joseph Smith in teaching obedience said, quote, whatever God requires is right, though we may not know the reason until much later. Jehovah blesses obedience. This is a theocracy ruled by God, not a collection of man-made decisions. This is governed from heaven. It'd be best to just ask Jehovah to help you understand it, but obey the decision. You may not always understand every declaration of a living prophet, but when you know a prophet is a prophet, you can approach the Lord in humility and faith and ask for your own witness about whatever his prophet has proclaimed. The living prophet and the first presidency, follow them and be blessed, reject them and suffer. The sooner you can get baptized, the sooner you will receive greater protection and blessings from Jehovah. Not long ago, it made me very happy to observe a little 10-year-old brother get baptized. I would emphasize that eight years of age. We don't wait until they're young adults or until they are nearly grown to teach them these laws. They should know at eight or before eight all about baptism and about the confirmation. What a blessing and a protection it was to enter the regular pioneer work at age 17 and to be able to go to Bethel at 18. Our experience with these 18-year-old missionaries has been positive. The mission presidents report that they are obedient, faithful, mature, and we encourage all young men who are worthy and who are physically able and mentally capable to respond to the call to serve. Today, Jehovah has delegated authority to men. They scripturally qualify to serve as elders and ministerial servants in order to serve, guide, and protect His people. The Lord has directed that only men will be ordained to offices in the priesthood. It is obvious that this is not due to a lack of respect for the gifts of our sisters in the congregation. In fact, Many responsible brothers will acknowledge that they have benefited from the experience and practical wisdom of our humble, spiritually mature sisters, faithful wives, 
loyally support their husbands as well as fulfill their own roles as preachers and teachers. A plea to my sisters to take their place. We need their voices, we need their input, and we love their participation with us. The account about how the branch in Haiti was protected from earthquake damage sent chills down my spine. While some buildings looked like this, our branch looked like this. He does not prevent all disasters, but he does answer our prayers as he did with the uniquely powerful cyclone that threatened to prevent the dedication of the temple in Fiji. Or he does blunt their effects, as he did with the terrorist bombing that took so many lives in the Brussels airport, but only injured our four missionaries. We can expect persecution for simply wanting to worship Jehovah in peace. Notwithstanding the present strength of the church, it seems that we are constantly under attack from one quarter or another. We know we're doing the right thing when we incur the hatred of these agents of the devil. That opposition to our cause testifies of its divinity. Would satanic powers combine against us if we were not posing a threat to such powers? We've seen the devil's attack on Jehovah's people in the country of Russia. When it was announced that we would build a temple in that city and selected a site on which it should stand, opposition rose against us. We might expect that the adversary of righteousness would seek to thwart its construction and the work to be done therein. That the properties owned by the organization, such as our kingdom halls and our beautiful branch office, have been unjustly confiscated by the Russian government. The church has survived exile from four states, the harassment and persecution of its members, an extermination order from a governor, the execution of its prophet, disenfranchisement by the government. Well, in spite of the hatred that's been spewed forth by the devil, it is amazing to see that persecution never ever stops God's faithful servants, that inactive ones former Bible students, relatives of witnesses, are all contacting the brothers, wanting to become involved again in the truth because of what they see happening in Russia. They know the end is close at hand. No unhallowed hand can stop the work from progressing. Persecutions may rage, mobs may combine, armies may assemble, calumny may defame. But the truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, and independent. No weapon formed against us will have any success. And why? Because Jehovah is on our side.